Um, I'm, I'm Ricky Knox, I'm one of the founders of Small World. Um, it's, it's a real pleasure to be uh, able to take a few minutes of your time to talk about, uh, talk about choice and Small World better. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of Small World uh, and choice. Um, I'm also then going to talk a little bit about M&A in the industry um, and some of the reasons why um, we, I think that this will be a continuing trend. Um, I hope there won't be too many presentations for Hugo to fit in next time around. Um, so, to start with um, why I'm here, um, on July 1st, um, Small World and Choice uh, united to form a uh, relatively large gl global remittance business. Um, uh, I'll explain our brands, which are over here on the right uh, in the next slide. Um, but you can see, obviously, choice at the top there, and below are the small world brands. Um, we're currently uh, a, an authorized payments institution in Europe. Um, for those of you not familiar with the uh, European regulation, that means we're, we've got sort of quasi-bank regulation. We're regulated by the banking authorities, um, and we have a number of additional, uh, additional rights beyond remittance um, that we're regulated to do. Um, as it says in the slide, um, we've got a payor payor network of upward of 140,000 cash payout locations in more than 120 countries. Um, so we have a, uh, and indeed, you know, our remittance volume is distributed quite evenly across uh, South America, Africa, and Asia. So we, uh, we have a genuine claim to be a global business. Um, we have a, a, an excellent technology platform uh, that obviously enables the whole thing which is used throughout the network. Um, there's still a few uh, choice agents uh, coming onto it, but, uh, but through the rest of the business, uh, and obviously outstanding regulatory compliance, which as we all know is, is critical. So, a um, little bit about, uh, about the story and, uh, and where, where, where we came from. Uh, so, you can see rather a lot of well, rather small uh, entries there in the box in the small world timeline. Uh, the story starts with uh, the acquisition of Global Link in October 2006, um, which was a small UK to Nigeria player, uh, in, uh, which was acquired by Small World. Um, we then acquired a small uh, specialist Ghanaian player called Express Funds. Uh, we um, took our first big step up in the volume, and that's remittance volume you can see down at the bottom there, um, with the acquisition of LCC in July 2007. This was a pan-European business, uh, present in six countries of Europe, um, uh, remitting money to Latin America, to Eastern Europe, and to Asia. Um, uh, we then acquired uh, BEBA, which is uh, uh, the world's largest um, remitter to Gambia, um, uh, followed by um, the acquisition of Omnex. Some of you are probably familiar with the, the Nexar story. Um, we were lucky enough to pick up their uh, um, their European assets um, as uh, that, uh, that story was unraveling. Um, the, we then um, uh, started, our, upon receipt of our payments institution license, we started a series of organic, uh, organic entries in addition to acquisitions. We launched in Ireland, Luxembourg and Germany, you can see there across the top. Um, and we acquired Swiss transfers in July 2009 and then finally sort of merged with um, uh, choice money transfer. The transaction, as you're probably familiar, began in December 2010 when we signed the contract and actually closed in July 1st, um, the American regulators being a, a, a recalcitrant bunch. Um, uh, the, um, uh, the, at the bottom of this uh, box, you can see the acquisitions um, from the choice story. So choice started in June 2007, actually incorporated before then cho as choice money transfer. Uh, bought Hero Express in the uh, eastern, on the eastern seaboard. Um, then its next acquisition was in Spain, a company called Heomil, um, which was a, um, a, a well-known Latin American player in the Spanish market, um, followed by Grupo Master in September 2008, uh, which we had the misfortune to be competing with Choice on. Um, uh, they won it. I think they overpaid. Um, but uh, the, uh, we then, um, and then, then obviously the, the combination with Small World. So that's sort of how we came about. Um, uh, as you can see, the brands there, we've uh, retained all the uh, company brands 
along, along, our, along our trip. We have a lot of respect for the businesses that those people have built over 15, 20 years uh, prior to our acquisition, uh, and they're well known within their own communities. Um, but all of those are now part of the Small World Group, as you can see. So, I mean, where does, this, where does the business look like today? Um, well, we trade in 12 countries. Um, we have a license to operate in 28 because we've received our EU Payments Institution license. So we'll be rolling out the rest of those over the coming years. Um, we have 12 brands, uh, 70 stores. We offer a com uh, operate a combined store uh, agent and direct model. Um, uh, we have 5,000, over 5,000 agents uh, sending money to 120 countries and our cash settlement network, as I said, of 140,000. We're doing about 600,000 transactions per month. Um, in terms of payer network, uh, and that's relevant to many, many of the payers I've been talking to here today, we've got lots of fabulous partners um, uh, across, um, across the continents. Um, Latin America, uh, big strength for us, uh, as it is for many here in the room. Um, but also we've got uh, quite an extensive payer network in Africa, uh, which we're very proud of, particularly in West Africa, where our IT system is installed on the desktop of, uh, of over, over 20,000 locations. Um, uh, also pay out in the ex-USSR, uh, big European market, uh, not, not so big from over here, um, and, uh, and obviously um, Asia and uh, Central and Southern Asia. Um, in terms of compliance, um, something uh, you know, we, we view as a strength, uh, although uh, our agents still view it as a pain in the ass. Um, uh, but um, uh, but we you know, really think that we have a, uh, a lead in terms of compliance. We have a system that actually controls everything centrally. All the documents are stored um, and can be accessed at any time. Uh, which becomes necessary when you have, or we, as we had prior to the EU payments regulation, about 17 different regulators making inquiries. Um, so uh, coming to the bit that, well, I hope you're interested in, I just want to talk a little bit about M&A strategy, um, share a little bit of uh, what our thinking, my personal thinking is about M&A in the industry, um, you know, why it makes sense, um, and, uh, and, and why I think it's set to continue. So, I mean, three, three main drivers of value uh, in an acquisition, um, uh, and you guys are all probably pretty familiar with the pressures uh, um, on, on the market um, that, that, that make these things valuable. The first is sort of increased value through scale. Um, there, is, uh, there are two, uh, two sides to scale. One is uh, lower cost per transaction, uh, which I think we're all all chasing, at least all of the ones. Well, in fact, probably everybody on the payer side as well as on the, the sender side. Um, uh, but also uh, potentially through increased multiples, uh, although uh, the current trading multiples on Western Union MoneyGram don't leave, mu leave much to be desired. Um, uh, also increased profits through integration benefits. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, one of the toughest things um, to actually do, but um, we like to think that having done it about 10 times now, um, we've got relatively good at extracting, uh, extracting integration benefits. Um, and lastly, um, which you know, I think, think people, uh, people sometimes neglect, but is you know, really core to being uh, a global remitter, but um, is increasing your customer base and your transactions through uh, corridor cross-sell. So obviously, if you add a player that has fabulous uh, payout uh, through maybe one of the fabulous people in this room, uh, into a to a new corridor, uh, particularly if that's a corridor in a tougher tougher country where it's more difficult to pay out, um, then giving that uh, giving that payout product, if you like, uh, to the whole network and cross selling it through all the other businesses, allowing you to grow new corridors. Um, so I mean, this is a case study. So I thought I'd give a little bit more color. Um, this is um, one of the deals. Unfortunately, remain nameless for the moment. Don't want to embarrass them with that uh, EBITDA pre-deal. Um, uh, so th this is a business that we bought. Now we we primarily bought profit profitable businesses um, that are that are growing. This was a slight exception. Um, it was losing about five hundred eighty thousand uh, pounds um, on an annualized basis when we purchased it. Um, uh, we made cost reductions, and I mean those come uh, primarily uh, through 
through the sort of integration of back office functions. So the management of, you know, payers working with, um, you know, uh, resolution of issues um, that come out of transactions, uh, but also, uh, but also through, you know, rationalizing front end staff where they overlapped. Um, then um, there was a significant uh, foreign exchange, in exchange increase. I mean, one of the things uh, slightly less critical to a U.S. remitter, but for a European uh, remitter, almost all of our currencies go through, uh, first of all, out of euro into dollar, and then from dollar into uh, a another exotic currency. And if you can obviously optimize the way that you're trading those currencies and the way that you manage those exposures, I know many of you in the room will actually do that yourselves, um, uh, you know, the, it, you can obviously get a significant uplift in, uh, in overall profitability. And we ended up with about uh, um, 370 grand EBITDA six month post acquisition. That business is currently producing about 3.2 million pounds of EBITDA. Um, so it's, it's grown significantly since then. Um, so I mean, just uh, what, or what, what's, the, uh, what's the conclusion of, uh, of, from the, from the M&A? Uh, piece we've looked at today. I mean, my, my personal view is that um, uh, given the current uh, external environment, uh, M&A and consolidation is going to con continue reasonably rapidly in this industry. Um, you're probably all familiar with uh, margin pressure, um, something uh, we all have the pleasure of enjoying. Well, if you don't, please put your hands up. Um, no, no hands. Good. Um, uh, you know, I'll need to get in your corridor otherwise. Um, uh, uh, regulation continues to tighten. Um, uh, in, uh, certainly in Europe, um, the payments institution um, uh, directive is really only being adopted now. Uh, enforcement's just beginning. And um, what you're finding is that the, whereas you know, various tax authorities and other things were local authorities were regulating the European market before very loosely. Um, that is really tightening up very fast. Um, uh, looking forward to some tightening in the US. Um, cost per transaction needs to be reduced. Um, it's a prerogative, I think, for everybody. Um, you know, to survive in a lower margin environment, you have to reduce your cost per transaction. Um, equally, uh, maximize the, the, the opportunities available from your foreign exchange. Organic growth, uh, while returning in some parts of the world, is not always possible in the current environment. Uh, there, and you know, as we all know, there's a mac extremely uncertain macroeconomic outlook. I can speak as a as a European. Well, I'm actually half American, but uh, as a half European, uh, that uh, it's looking pretty uncertain for us. Um, I was chatting to a friend of mine who advises the Greek government on debt, and uh, and she was uh, commenting that the, the the French and Germans were we're sort of playing a game of chicken uh, with Greece, uh, which could result in, in pretty significant uh, financial impact, not only for the European Union, but also for the world economy. Um, so, I mean, really just uh, my view uh, concluding, concluding is, you know, I think that there will be further uh, consolidation in the industry. If anybody is looking to sell their business, uh, I am here after the meeting. No, and uh, and, and uh, I look forward to uh, chatting to any of you who may have particular questions afterwards. Thanks very much.